Welcome to Innovation Dialogue. I'm Diana Ding, and today's show is co-produced by Ding Ding TV and IND TV USA. And today, I'm so happy that、uh, we're going to co-host this with my good friend Amrita Singh from IND TV USA. And、uh, here we have Mr. Otto Lee, and he's a candidate for Santa Clara County Supervisor. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you for having me.、Absolutely. Good to see you again, Amrita. Yeah. First, thank you so much, Diana, for having us. Yeah, I think it's really good that you know when, when we co-produce this show and this content will be delivered to India American community and Chinese American community, so more people will know. Yes. Yeah, yeah as you were talking about earlier, forty percent of the county that you are covering is Asians.、Mm -hmm. So I think this will be fantastic to get the message across and、uh, get you know what you have to say regarding the upcoming elections. Yes. yes, it's yes. a very important year.、Uh, I think a lot of people don't really know that the、uh, election coming up in 2020 will be at different times. Normally, our primary election is held in June, but this year it's going to be held in March、okay. because California wants to be a player in the presidential election and selection process. Interesting. So instead of being in June,、uh, March will be the period because that way, right after Iowa, New Hampshire. California will be very important state to determine the next nominee for the parties. Okay. Yes, it's so wonderful. I know I've been knowing Otto for more than 15 years. So Otto is an entrepreneur, a lawyer, a U.S. Navy commander, and also the mayor of Sunnyvale. And、uh, he's also a good father and a good husband, <laughs> <Yeah> . wearing <laughs> so many hats.、Yeah. So、uh, you are running for the Santa Clara County Supervisor. So、uh, tell us then, how many cities in Santa Clara County? What's the area? Sure, Santa Clara County is probably the most、uh, influential and most the, the wealthiest、uh, county in the United States.、Uh, the the county actually you know, goes as far north as Palo Alto on one side and Milpitas on the other side, and go all the way down south to Gilroy. So there are actually 15 cities in Santa Clara County itself,、oh. right, with about two million people. Wow, that's a lot of people,、yeah. and a lot of diversity, right? Because from Gilroy crowd to San Jose to Sunnyvale, Milpitas, Palo Alto, a lot of different、uh, diversities and all a lot of different issues within those community. What would you say are the top three issues that Santa Clara County is facing? Yeah, in my opinion, I do believe、uh, the homeless situation is getting、uh, really almost out of hand at this point. Uh, of course, that's part of the reason of the housing affordability、sure. uh, being so expensive that people can no longer, their kids can no longer afford to、uh, stay here after college, for example.、Uh, and then, of course, the traffic. Right, a lot of people still moving in here.、Yeah. Uh, that's why causing the shortage of housing, and we really need to fix our public transportation system and traffic because it's taking us way too long.、Uh, traffic jams getting way, way, way worse now than a few years ago, even. Yeah, sorry.、Um, you kickstarted your career as a planning commissioner for、uh, for Sunnyvale. In Sunnyvale,、mm -hmm. and fast forward now,、um, do you think?、Uh, do you wish you had done something different to be able to predict the amount of the population growth that has been happening in Sunnyvale? I think the、uh, the growth is, of course, a good thing for the region as far as jobs concerned. And people's income level certainly has risen because of these we call good jobs coming in. So when I was in Sunnyvale, we're very much、uh, supportive of getting the good buildings built so that we have good jobs and attracting good companies to come. We have a type of problem that most countries, most part of countries, are、uh, uh, envy、okay. of having this problem that we have too many good jobs here.、Um, we could certainly plan better in terms of housing. I think we were slow in terms of getting more housing built. And, and build the right places because certainly you don't want to build too much housing or high density housing in single family neighborhood. Sure, that doesn't work. But at the same time, I think a public transportation system、uh, definitely has fallen way behind.、Uh, and, and if we want high density, you know, I'm from Hong Kong originally.、Uh, there's certainly ways to do it, but we need to build the density、uh, where there's transportation, a hub where people can take the train, the light rail, the BART. To get to work, so that they can really not use the car. Sure. Yeah, housing is really the big problem right now in Silicon Valley. I believe that so many elected officials、um, has been working really、mm -hmm. hard on this problem. So, what can you do differently to solve this? Yes. So, in terms of housing, I think, like I said, we really need to、uh, work harder to、uh, build where the places、uh, needs to have the public transportation infrastructure. And in order for that to work, I really think that some of the things that we're seeing, like the light rail system, for example, a lot of us 
want to take the light rail, sure. but what is the problem with light rail? We always see it to be pretty empty yep. most of the time. Uh, partly because why is that? It's why? very slow. Yeah, um, the timing. They're the never time. they're on time, right? right? Yeah. Not enough frequency. Sure. Because public transportation people shouldn't have to wait ten to fifteen minutes Absolutely. for the next train if you miss one. Uh, or when it comes to downtown San Jose, let's say, it's all on the surface, which means it crawls very slowly mm -hmm. because if it goes really fast, it might hit somebody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So the issue is why are light rail on the surface? Can we have some we call great separation, either elevated or put underground, sure. for example. BART is a very successful system in many ways in San Francisco, partly because it's underground. And okay. I'm, I'm hoping that these are some of the issues that we need to look at again to make our public transportation better. They need to move faster, they need to be great separated, and that they don't keep running to red lights. Yeah, yes. I'm, I'm actually glad that you touched on that because, uh, you know, when you're in downtown San Jose, you, you don't realize you're at the VTA train track because it all blends in very well. You don't know if the trains are coming. There's not a good notification system as a pedestrian if the train is coming by or not. And I had my office there for 20 years <laughs> on the corner of First of Santa Clara okay. as, a, my, uh, as my attorney office there. Uh, and I cannot tell you countless times seeing actual cars right. driving onto the train tracks yeah. because they can tell which is which. So the, the idea that the, the great separation and, and having the, the, the light rail uh, be undergrounded, I think these are some of the ideas that it's going to cost money to do, obviously. But so where the have. money from, do you think? Well, we do have actually uh, various uh, measures to, uh, to raise money for BART, for example. And I do think people are willing to spend the money uh, if the idea is right. And I do think that whether we go to the voters for a bond measure or uh, whether we look harder on our general funds, we should be able to come up with some sort of those solutions. Um, one of the things I'm very um, excited about is, for example, we drive these expressway in uh, Santa Clara County. We call them Lawrence Expressway, Capital Expressway, Monica sure. Expressway. When you hear that word expressway, it means it's not city, yeah. it's not state, it's actually county expressway. Huh. But we say expressway, how come we have to stop every 20 to 30 seconds of light? Yeah, because right. you think you can zoom so through, right? Old tab yeah. expressway. Because yeah. exactly. <laughs> these are expressway that was designed 40, 50 years ago okay. without this density of people in mind. Mm -hmm. So what we really need to do is a lot of the uh, areas where you see these intersections of the lights, they really need to have the great separation built in so that they are either going above or below so we don't keep stopping every 20 seconds and call expressway. But is is underground really the right way to go about it? Because I know the one in Melpitas, that's mm -hmm. a beautiful BART station, Correct. overpass. Because in terms of cost measurements, is it better to do it on an overpass, such as how the Melpitas is mm -hmm. doing, or mm -hmm. something underground? Right. What are the cost differences? I think we need to look above. Oh, yes, underground yeah. is definitely more expensive sure. uh, by far. Uh, going above. But even above, sometimes people do not share your view that they are being pretty. Okay. So the design is very important to make sure it's done right. Uh, I have no um, uh, specific desire what is underground or over, but I think what's really needed is that once you have it separated from the ground level, I think not only would it be safer mm -hmm. to uh, have less problems with uh, potential accidents, but the speed that they could go in and out of the area will be much faster and the more people will be using it. Yeah, so you, you've been working in the U.S. Navy for 28 years and work as a sales officer, as, at, well, ranked as a commander, but as a sales officer, as, uh, you know, many different jobs there. Mm -hmm. So what this experience has impact for what you're doing right now? Sure. I was a, a supply officer in the Navy, and what it means is that I'm also the person that balances the books. So when I was on the Navy ship, my first uh, duty, I was actually the bank. The ship's treasurer. Ah. I had over four hundred thousand dollars of cash in my safe okay. at the age of twenty-four years old, oh. and it's a huge responsibility <laughs> right. for a twenty-four year old. Uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, you know, you sink or swim, and I certainly survived. And, 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 and taught me a lot of ways of running businesses and how to balance the cash flow, and making sure that the the money coming in is enough to pay to the expenses. And I think these are some of the the fiscal uh, responsible measures which I have learned as a the fly officer in the Navy, uh, and also the fact that I also got sent to Iraq for a year mm. uh, in 2009. And when I got there, that was when President Obama just got elected okay. and announced the drawdown of our troops. So I'm very honored to say that I was a part of that operation to help close a lot of the bases in Iraq in a very short time and bring our troops home safely. 
Uh, and, and during that experience, I certainly have a few near-death experiences, you know, uh, dugging bombs and, you know, one of the mortal landed 90 feet from me. Oh my. So I would say that I've been very fortunate and I've been going to church more often ever since too. Uh, but at the same time, I also learned some uh, very important lessons, one of which is where I lived. Uh, mm. I lived what is the, the lesson? Uh, I lived in a 40-foot container box when I was in Iraq for a year. Oh, wow. And uh, they divide the box into three uh, parts. It's got windows, it's got doors. It's not luxury living, but you know what? It is safe, and this is quite comfortable, all in all, honestly, uh, as a single person. And looking at the homeless situation we have now with the tents on our, underneath our uh, highways, overpass, our creeks, uh, living in tents, I really do think that some type of heart shelter, uh, a low-cost heart shelter, like a box, like mm -hmm. a container box of something I lived in, is the solution that we should explore because it's a a low-cost and very quick way of putting people into housing. And I really think that uh, right now we are out of control the way that mm. these uh, homeless people are. Great idea. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just imagine, it's a great idea, I think. And I think City yeah. of Oakland, or just uh, uh, hearing the news, City of Oakland just introduced those... Um, mm -hmm you know, uh, shelters as well. They're also hard boxes, Correct. very like, but very neat yes. inside, but it's not as compact as, you know, what you had mm -hmm. to experience, by the way, thank you for your service. Um, but it's, it's a little bit more luxury living, mm -hmm. I get compared to that. What do you think of that concept? And I think, you know, with, with that as well, I also wanted to discuss uh, what's happening in uh, San Francisco. Yes. Uh, it seemed like uh, w one of the stats that I was reading, the homeless population hasn't really grown, mm -hmm. even though we have put in a lot of resources and money into it. Mm -hmm. So where has that money been going? How can we better use those funds? Mm -hmm. um, what are some of your thoughts on that? Yes. Um, I know it's a big question. Oh, it's a huge question. And the thing is, homeless is not just a matter of housing affordability. Right. Let's be honest. Uh, how the homeless issue is extremely complex. Mental health is the one of the largest part of a homeless situation. Uh, and turns out more than half of the homeless population in California are veterans. So oh, these are veterans. folks coming back from war, whether it's Vietnam or, or this mm. uh, Middle East, mm. that come back with these uh, invisible wounds, we call sure. it like PTSD. Uh, so, as a veteran myself, uh, I am... You were being awarded as the Veteran of the Year in yes, California. Yes, yeah, yes. yeah. After I came back from uh, Iraq, I'm very honored to, uh, to have that. But, you know, we, I really want to help our veterans coming back and also those who are homeless, where the mental health uh, population, uh, it, the mental health services, is not truly being developed and uh, delivered hmm. to those who really need them right now. Uh, there are those who require very significant services that you can see them on the streets uh, that really should be uh, helped immediately. Uh, and I do think that with the help of our county, and this is basically the job of the county supervisor, mm -hmm. the county is the public safety net, sure. which provides not just the health care, the county hospital, but the mental health, drug rehabilitations, uh, criminal justice, the sheriffs, the jail, uh, rehabilitation. So all those issues are actually falling under the county's purview. And I do think the county has a much greater role to play to help those who are homeless. And that's why I do think that uh, if elected supervisor, this will be one of my number one priority to make sure that we focus uh, right into this issue to make sure that these services, whether it's mental health, drug rehabilitation, and housing are all being made available. Since homeless is such a big issue, maybe for our viewers, we can kind of break it down to a few segments mm -hmm. and really understand what your game plan is here right. to resolve this, you know, such a major issue and also heartfelt issue as well. Because, right. uh, you know, you, you see, if you're mentioning that a lot of the homeless comes from our vets, mm -hmm. it's very heartbreaking. I mean, these are the mm -hmm. individuals that put their lives online and mm -hmm. here they're coming back and they're not being able to afford housing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's extremely heartbreaking as well. So um, now if we kind of discuss the space, Oakland just kind of, you know, launched mm -hmm. their uh, program. They have, I know there was, I just remember the color was like light blue and little red and white, mm -hmm. these like tiny little homes. Um, I, and I believe it was located under the uh, freeway overpass. Mm -hmm. That was one of the locations. So is that something, in terms of location, um, where should these houses be? Because there's a big thing happening right now with San Francisco. Sure. It's right on Embarcadero. Right. Sometimes Pride. community, they Pride. don't want them to 
be there, right? right. So where is the right location? Yeah. Yeah. No, I think it, it, it's uh, it's important to have places uh, located in, in terms of siting, in terms of land, yeah. in terms of Santa Clara County. Guess who's got all the land? Yeah. It's not the 15 cities. The county actually has more land than everybody else. So I think as a county supervisor, that's actually one of the roles that the county can play. Because if the county is willing to use its land to do this uh, project, the land cost is not there anymore. Okay. So the only thing you're talking about is really the construction cost. Okay. And if we're using ready-made like modular housing like you talked about, or whether it's the 40-foot container boxes, sure. the cost of these could be very low mm -hmm. and very fast you could get those uh, in place. So I think those are the type of solutions that we need to think hard. Now, where to put them right. is going to be the, the, the million dollar question. Well, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. People don't want to have a site close to them. You might have to be a little bit further away from the center. Mm -hmm. Then the question is transportation. You need to make sure that people are able to get in and out. So I think some type of shuttle system mm -hmm. uh, should be also established. Sure. But when you have these, locate, these uh, 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 housing units located next to each other, you could also provide the services nearby so that those, those who are living there will be able to get access to whether it's mental health, uh, drug rehabilitations, or et cetera, because it's all there. And then if they could actually have bus lines that like get them to, let's say, the Valley Medical Center, sure. where the hospital is, then they could get access to the other services ah, fantastic, as well. Fantastic, yeah. So these are the ways that we, 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 we really have to uh, think hard, but I think if the solution is really there. If, if, our, if our will is there, if our, mind, if our minds do it, you know, we can make it happen. One thing to note is, the county supervisor, there's only five supervisors. Okay. And all you need is really three supervisors to come up with an idea to agree to, sure. and it can happen, which is far more effective than the uh, legislature, like in uh, Sacramento or Congress. Uh, and even the city of San Jose, you have 10 councilmen and, yeah. and the mayor, there's yeah. 11 of them. Well, five people, three people can do a lot. Okay. Yes. I think many of the problems uh, fundamentally is because of the, you know, policy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what do, you, what do you want to do to, to maybe, maybe make some change of the policy? Yes. I think the, the, with respect to the mental health issue, uh, California has actually passed a proposition and uh, all, almost close to a billion dollars has been coming to the uh, county of Santa Clara mm. on mental health services. However, due to various policy and red tapes, those money actually has not been distributed to those who need them. It's still sitting there. And to me, I think this is so not... Where, where they spend those money. Exactly. The mental health issue is definitely here. We, we, what I do believe we need sometimes is, uh, you look back in the 70s uh, when uh, then-Governor Reagan uh, shut down the funding to mental health institutions, hmm. uh, a lot of people who were in these places have been kicked out, basically. Okay. Uh, and I really do think that some of the folks really need those inpatient care. So one of my ideas is, let's start with a few, like say three dozen. Give me 40 okay. inpatient Mm -hmm. mental health beds right now. Okay. I think if we have those uh, established with the mental health dollars that we have, we could put some of the most seriously mentally ill uh, patients and, and some of the homeless uh, individuals into care immediately. I think the way we're treating it right now is not civilized, it's inhumane, mm -hmm. and being the richest county mm -hmm. in, in, the, in the country, we really can do way better. This is the richest county in the country, but right? there are so many high-tech companies, and uh, but you know we still have those so many homeless people. Exactly. So, is there any way that we can work with high-tech with those companies together? Absolutely, I think there is a role for the private industry to play. Sure. Because I do think most of them want to do something to help solve this problem. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not going to be a silver bullet that the mm -hmm. county will fix everything or the city. I do think that the role of the, the community uh, working together, uh, the buying from the neighbors and also the companies, uh, whether it's their employees volunteering the time or even funding. Because if you come up with a very good plan and they, the companies see that it's working, I do think a lot of them would like to partner with the county or the city government as one of the, the people that put into the efforts to solve this problem. Yeah, to piggyback what Dinah was saying earlier mm -hmm. about policies and your extensive background mm -hmm. in the financial part of planning the city, 
I think it'd be really cool to kind of be able to combine because I'm always boggled by the idea how does a navigation center on a market door gets passed. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, I, I just feel like if I was living there, I mean, mm -hmm. I would not be able to afford a waterfront property. Mm -hmm. And many people that are working very hard mm -hmm. uh, within that area also cannot afford a waterfront properties. Mm -hmm. So I definitely understand, you know, what they're saying in terms of the homeless, you know, being able to get this a prime property, as you might call it, mm -hmm. right? I mean, we're, that's one of the kind of the richest part of the country, right. be able to get that spot. So it'd be really cool to see, you know, what you can do mm -hmm. um, in terms of taking that funding that's already available. Mm -hmm. And then we also have like sales for CEOs. They're also trying mm -hmm. to yes. help the county and the city out with this exact problem, mm -hmm. be able to combine those resources and actually figure out a solution mm -hmm. where people, where they're living in that area, it's like, okay, you know, um, I work hard, I should be able to have this view for ourselves, and then homeless person also be able to take care of, because I completely understand as a society, we have to take care of our needy, we have mm -hmm. to take care of our seniors, we have to take care of our kids. Mm -hmm. So, um, it, so it, it would be really interesting to see, you know, when, when you get into office, how this all plays out. But do you, if, if you had just had to touch like a nirvana, if you already got the money and the support, what would you do with it? Well, I think it's very clear that the uh, the need is there. Uh, yep. Whether we're talking about extra hospital beds, like sure. you mentioned, or uh, finding a location to put these uh, housing uh, uh, in Let's place. Let's put you on the spot, Mr. Yeah. Lee. What location would you choose? Well, I think <laughs> with the county we have now, okay. when you look at the Santa Clara County, you really have no idea how big Santa Clara County really is. Yeah, I didn't realize uh, there was like 15 cities, yeah. right? And yeah. there are 15 cities yeah. in there. And then if you look at the area, we, a lot of times we focus so much on the downtown area. Sure. But once you get outside, there's a lot of hillsides, there's mm. a lot of areas that we really are not uh, touching mm. uh, in that sense. Um, different ideas of people talking about maybe Santa Clara County fairgrounds to be used. Mm -hmm. Some people talk about maybe enclosing the airport and all that. But besides those places, there's still lots of other areas that we really have not been, been touching where I think is something that we should explore. Uh, I'm not going to dictate or yeah, just say, sure. hey, it's going to be here. Yeah, yeah. But I do think that, and you do need the community feedback. You want to make sure people are happy yeah. of the ultimate outcome because if all of them are fighting it, it's not going to work. And I don't think there will be a fight if, if the location but is not quite... It's very difficult to get everybody happy. No, that's sure. true. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Well, I think that it's all about communication. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you need, well, uh, what are you talking about? You know, I'm thinking you know, really great, great ideas. If you are a county supervisor, mm -hmm. you know, so, so many great things will happen, but it's going to be very difficult. So can you just think that what's the most difficult things for you? Oh. To get um, all the resources. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, at the end of the day, a supervisor still needs support by their colleagues. Sure. So there are five supervisors, so you have to, of course, meet the needs of the other uh, colleagues as well. And I'm not really trying to get three votes. I'm hoping to get all five votes. Okay. So that whatever solution that comes through is something that we can all uh, support mm -hmm. jointly. Because uh, without the buy-in, if you have only three votes, not by one vote, you know, it's very easy with the one vote changes, then everything stops. Uh, and I think my record on the Sunnyvale uh, City Council being a consensus builder I have been able to make a lot of votes into seven zero votes uh, to pass. And so in, in terms of these issues, these are certainly very difficult issues, but I don't think there's anybody here would say that they don't want to support putting homeless Absolutely. into homes. Yeah. Uh, and, and I think the issue has been, well, where do you want to put it exactly. and how it's going to affect other people? So uh, getting a community buy-in and like you said, outreach is absolutely important. Just like any planning issues yeah. that you see in any city, uh, when folks are trying to build a project, uh, if the neighbors don't know what's going on, they would come and protest yeah. to object to the... the, the it's happened in uh, Cupertino all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> and um, I actually just had another uh, question. Since the show is called Innovation Dialogue, yes. I wanted to, and you know, we're in a high-tech area. Yes. Obviously, the world is looking at our innovations and using our uh, mm -hmm. innovations as well on a daily basis. What about something like an app for a city where, you know, you get to see, because um, like we were mentioning, there's a tons of, uh, you know, resources and everything. There's going to homeless or even the city planning or roads. Mm -hmm. Or I remember I, I live off of, um, I'm in the Alam Rock uh, area, mm -hmm. and there was like a $115 million crazy budget just allocated for a blue bus mm -hmm. to go from 
just the alum rock to Santa Clara, mm -hmm. and I barely see that bus being being filled. And now because of that construction, mm -hmm. I mean, first of all, when the construction was happening, the traffic was horrible. Then now, secondly, there's a dedicated lane for that bus, right. but for what, five people? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to see if there's like some kind of a cool app or something that a city can design where as citizens, oh, we get to see. You can work with startups. Yeah, there yeah. are many yeah. of them. Yeah, to yeah. be able to see how, where the funding's going, yeah. how it's allocated, yeah. you know, That's treat right. it like a, like a business. Yes, I mean, transparency yeah. is very, very important. I mean, right now there's a lot of debate regarding the uh, light rail extension to the east side because of that issue. It's like, yeah. why are we spending half a billion dollars yeah. to build light rail and how many people will take it? Exactly. Same issues that you have. Uh, and I think it's important that our public transportation system, like we talk about, number one, I think it's too expensive, right? We're talking about over $2.50 sure. uh, for people who are working every day, round trip, you know. Uh, in most cities, public transportation is something that is very, very low cost, Absolutely. especially those uh, places that uh, have a lot of high density. They don't try to make money of, yep. of public transportation. It's a service. Sure. So this whole fare box recovery uh, idea I, I'm, I'm against. Mm -hmm. I really think that we need to figure out how to get people in it. I am I'm even supportive of making public transportation almost free, if it's not free altogether, just to get people into the habit of taking it. Mm. Because if it costs more to take the public transportation and more time, then your car driving to wherever you need to go to, exactly. who would take the public transportation? Exactly, yeah. Right. So and that's what's causing all the traffic jam that we have on the <laughs> road. So by fixing our public transportation so that people actually will be using it, whereas higher density, higher frequency, lower cost, and faster from place to place, I do think that the, that the situation on the roads will get a lot better because less people will be driving. So it's, it's, a, it's a total solution. Yeah. Uh, well, and, we almost there, the time is already there. Uh -huh. So the last question is, if you get elected as mm -hmm. our county supervisor, uh, what will you do differently in the innovation, innovative way for yeah. our county? Sure. Um, I think being Silicon Valley, I think technology is so ingrained. Uh, one of the first things that I want to tell people is why are VTA buses still running on anything but electric? Ah. Believe it or not, in China, every major cities in China, all the city buses are ready today, electric, 100% huh. huh. electric. Huh. It, uh, is. it is. It is. That's so cool. We are behind. Yeah. As much as we think we are so advanced, uh, we're way behind. Okay. Uh, and I do think that our buses need to be converted to electric, not yeah. 15, not 20 years. We need to do it now. Sure. Mm -hmm. oh, well, thank you. Thank, thank you. you.